Good afternoon, good evening, good morning everybody. This is Coach Carol, or Carol McCulloch, and I'm really delighted to actually present for a short time with you today on one of my favourite topics, e-portfolios. We have had another presenter yesterday on e-portfolios and I thoroughly enjoyed listening to another Carol, Carol Teitelman. And I learned a few new things from her. But for me, professional portfolios are what drives me to record things that I do. So I'm going to cover some of that today for you and get some sharing happening and some networking and maybe give you a demonstration or two. So I'll hand back to Amy for the rest of the slides. All right, so we just wanted to take a minute to thank our sponsors. Uh, Civet Academy has, has generously sponsored this event. Um, Steve Hargadon and the Learning Revolution, um, Carol and the team, the Australia E-Series, and of course, Blackboard Collaborate. Um, so that is it for this slide here. And this is our fun map slide, which I'm sure you are all pros at by now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, you guys all have whiteboard permissions, so go ahead and drag a smiley face or a world map to wherever you are. I'm always, I'm always kind of embarrassed with my visual geography here. <laughs> I don't know if I'm even close to where I actually am at this point. Great, all right. Someone's way out here. So it looks like we have a North Pole visitor. I don't know if that's real or not, but it looks like we're all over the place. It's awesome. Nikki, I bet that's you near Chicago somewhere. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Moving on. And Carol, back to you. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, everybody. I was actually thinking I'd like to put a pin on the map to say where I'd rather be or I'd like to be. So maybe I'll uh, think about that for one of the other presentations. Certainly like to visit other countries, but how easy is this today? We're actually having the other countries come to us and visit with us for a short time and really appreciate that because the time zones can be really tricky. <laughs> yes, indeed, Michael. So today I want to share you, with you uh, a bit of an e-portfolio journey. And down here on the right-hand side, you can see a little figure whom some of you might recognise. Uh, we ran a, an e-portfolio course a couple of years ago, and this little e-portfolio guy was our little mascot. And so you may see a few more of him throughout this presentation. I actually found my other presentation from which I have developed this shortened version for you today because I wanted to share with you not just my own e-portfolio but the journey of getting a course up and running and for helping others across the globe engage with the whole concept of professional portfolios. So I want to ask a question. <laughs> you can indeed, and you can smile at any time, but yeah, when you see the little e-portfolio man or Epcop, you know, certainly smile again. No prizes today though. I, what I'd also like you to do straight off the bat is give me a green tick from the polling tools if you have an e-portfolio already in whatever form that it presents itself. Getting a few green ticks, great. Excellent, I'm really glad to see that. And maybe those who don't, maybe I should put my own green tick in. <laughs> we can actually help encourage others to take one up. So thanks for sharing that with me. I guess we need to be cognizant of what an e-portfolio is. And you know, they've been around a long time. You know, back in 2007, this was the 
de definition that came from Shane Sutherland, and I'll let you read that one for yourself. And since then, Shane and a group of other writers have written a fabulous book called Pebble Godgy. You can give me a smiley face if you know that one. And he is talking about the use of ePortfolios as a goal setting planning tool, not just a reflection on achievements and experiences tool. So if you've ever heard of Pebble God you could put a green tick in. If you're looking for it uh, to purchase, I'm sure you'll find it on Amazon. It was published in 2011. And in the book, he talks about uh, how you can use a blogging process for reflective practice. And I know that that's what I do all the time is I use a blogging tool or a journal or a notebook because I am a reflective learner. Can I have another green tick if you have some sort of journal or blogging happening as well? Thank you. A few more of those coming in. And later on, I'll ask you to um, reflect on or give us an explanation of what that does for you. And feel free to keep going in the text chat and just make comments as you go. So today, I'm going to try to give you my vision of how ePortfolios are essential for the professional workers such as ourselves. I've taken this little diagram from the work of the JISC, and I should have got the link for that, but I'll, I'll do that in a moment. And you may not be able to read all of the text here on this slide, but for me, it was a really great way of looking at how a portfolio can be used from the early years right through to the latter years. And I guess I put myself in the latter years. Uh, so you might be able to see me over here. Uh, and I keep going because I find that every day, every year, even though I'm retired or semi-retired, there's so much learning that I would reflect on. I need to keep my ePortfolio up to date. But let's come back down here to uh, this young lady here. And this is uh, a little journey for Susie. You may have seen it or read about it. Um, it's been around a while, but it still actually gives you the visuals that I think are really important for the journey. Even back further than that, you might in, uh, encourage young students to reflect on their learning and keep a journal or to have their own little e-portfolio. And there are some lovely tools that are available for that. But once they get into the school years, I think it's essential that they finish their school year and have some sort of reflection on it and hopefully inside an e-portfolio. In some countries, that's mandatory. Uh, for example, in Wales, where I was born, every school student must have an e-portfolio. I'm pretty sure they're still continuing with that. So it's always been an encouragement to me that one day we should be able to have that happening in Australian education. Then when we move along a little bit in years to when the student moves into a work relationship with all kinds of different employers, and these days there would be many of them, and not just the one, so they need some sort of passport to move between jobs. Absolutely, absolutely, it has to be portable. So this becomes, as this um, person is demonstrating, like a learner passport. And that might take them into this arena where they're uh, entering university, entering a learn local, or into a TAFE, or any other adult learning environment. And you'll see more and more in, in these situations or these environments that 
portfolios are built into the whole experience for the student. Uh, going back to you now, uh, give me a green tick if in your institute environment or community centre you have portfolios as a tool that you introduce to, us, to your students early on. Just give me a green tick or a red cross. This is where I think it will differ because that, hasn't, that process hasn't been embedded inside the institutions. It has in some. You may, if you live in Victoria, be uh, aware of the Box Hill Institute of Technology. Every student who attends begins their learning with an e-portfolio and they carry that through to the end of their two, three or four year courses and it's built into their induction process. So they start with that mindset and continue right through. And then as we move into the latter years, we move to different jobs, even different countries, we want a portfolio that's portable and that we can take with us. So I just want to stop talking for a moment, take a sip of water, and I invite any of you to come to the microphone and tell me what type of portfolio that you would find valuable for yourself. I can see that Michael is texting in there, so I'll wait and see what he has to say. And I know that some of you who do keep e-portfolios have a particular purpose in mind, so I'd like you to add that to the text chat too. Ian, go ahead. Want to click on the talk button, Ian? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, I've basically just got a, a website that I've been using uh, for many years. It's the uh, B-I-Z-I-F-Y dot com. Um, and that's a good way where you can actually show your work experience and a whole pile of things as well. And uh, once again, you can get a professional one, but that's a bit of a cost. Um, but yeah, it's quite a nice one. Yeah, About Me is a good one too. Yes, yeah, so I've, I've uh, got it About Me as well. Thanks, Ian. Yes, you've, you reminded me that um, we will unpack some of the different types of portfolio tools that we can have. And um, I think if we begin um, in our creation of a portfolio with a real purpose, then we choose the tool according to the purpose. And I think that's a valuable starting point. Michael, do you have your microphone with you? Do you want to tell us about your aim to have your portfolio meeting the requirements of the local registration board. Yeah, I'm in an interesting situation here in the West because as a relief teacher I can't actually um, fulfill the requirements of my uh, teacher registration uh, easily. And I've discovered that I've got to create, send in a portfolio which I think is either going to be paper based or God knows it could be a scanned PDF. Um, so I'm just interested in seeing what portfolios might look like um, because it takes the registration board about two weeks to respond to an email. And uh, when they responded to the email, they didn't answer the question. So we'll wait and see. Thanks, Michael. Um, I guess that's a source of frustration I can hear about um, who are we going to share these portfolios with and how nimble can they be in reflecting on it. Liz, uh, I know that you started with Mahara and I'm going to focus a little bit on that today as well and that you've also got a Google site and you're using it as a professional portfolio already. I'm really pleased to hear that. 
Uh, please let me know if you've got a microphone if you'd like to chat about that at some stage today. What I thought I would also focus on today is how you can make use of some of the strategies that I'm going to show you. Oh, that's okay, Liz. Just keep texting away there. Some of the strategies that you might consider using to keep some reflection on your experiences in Aussie Live. So the other day in the Uncon, no, it was this morning only, my gosh. <laughs> Earlier today, I did a little Pecha Kucha presentation and talked about the different tribes that we have happening in Aussie Live. And I've given them names now. So I'm saying that presenters here in Aussie Live are our wisdom warriors, the people who, uh, they're the emergent thought leaders. They're reflective, like me, and compassionate. They lead, support, mentor, and they're into, in a big way, collaborative education, a, continually, a continual source of inspiration. So they need to keep an e-portfolio for their professional life. The second group, I'll just use my little pointer, the network nomads, I uh, consider those to be the people who are willing to share their experiences, like yourselves in this room today. And they're usually found in uh, a whole variety of communities of practice across the globe, as Julie Lindsay was describing today and yesterday. And they might be the sort of people who enter into the massive open online courses. They're, they're risk takers and they're not afraid to jump in. And always independent free thinkers, there's joiners. And I think for them that a reflection on the networking that they do should also be included in a professional portfolio. So if you've attended conferences, then that becomes almost like an artifact, at least evidence, of your continual network nomading. Then our third group, which I've given the title of technology stewards, uh, these are the sorts of people like Amy and Michael and others in my team who have given tirelessly as volunteers for this conference. I think that they too should keep a professional portfolio. They are also emerging forms of leaders in communities of practice and they're always helping those communities to construct and live comfortably in their digital habitats. You know, I can't believe how much work has gone into the background and how ably that Amy has been able to deal with that. And we're really fortunate to have that happen to get this whole system behind our conference working well. So I'm hoping that Amy will include and others of our volunteers will include some reflections in their portfolios. That's unfortunate that relief work funding is being cut. Whoa, not a good thing to have happen. We need you guys. Excellent, Michael. I'll be really happy to see your blogging. I just wanted to uh, change tactics just for a moment, just to keep you on your toes. There is a survey happening, and I need to grab that one for you and put it into the text chat. Through my connections with the ePortfolios Australia network, we had a request from a student in the University of Huddersfield, the United Kingdom, who was doing a short online survey. And they are looking for people to give their um, opinions on how you as a student use ePortfolio and how it influences your learning. So it would be nice if you wanted to contribute to that. And I'll give you the link to the Australia ePortfolios so that you can find it for yourself and also uh, have a wander around in the ePortfolios 
Australia blog. I'm trying to type and talk at the same time. So I'll just pop that into the chat for you right now. So if you go over there, you'll see that message that Alison Miller has left about the survey. And on the right hand side, you'll see that there's a recent post called how you as a student use them and how, you, how they influence your learning. There's a whole wealth of other information in that site that you might like to tap into. For example, there will be a Pebble Bash in this year. So they're the people from um, Pebble Pad. And I'm just popping into there to have a look for myself right now. And that's happening in Lancefield, Victoria. Wow. OK, I'm just going to copy that and put it into the room for us. So if you are a follower of Pebble Pads, you might be interested in that one. So I'm not sure if you wanted to uh, do that survey, but please feel free to do so. All right, now it's a chance for a little more conversation about why we use ePortfolios. And what I've tried to display here is some of the reasons that you might use your ePortfolio. And in some cases, I don't agree with all of them. For example, I'm not a big fan of using an ePortfolio as, just grabbing my pointer, as an assessment tool. I just find that it's more of a personal thing to use an ePortfolio, and it shouldn't really be assessed as such. There are other tools that you can use for that. But I know that there are many of the larger universities who do exactly that. Uh, so put your opinions into the text chat uh, as we go. I am, however, a big fan of using an ePortfolio to showcase achievements. And you know that can be at any stage. It could be a set of certificates. A student might be a sporting person and they have lots of certificates. Or they might have um, awards, cups, medals. Pictures of those would become artifacts to showcase their achievements. Now, for example, right now I'm looking at my wall in my office and I've got all my Toastmaster International certificates framed and on the wall. I'm very proud of those and I want to be able to share them and I'm going to show you how in a moment. But the biggest one for me is to use your ePortfolio as a process of tracking, monitoring and reflecting on your lifelong learning. I don't think it stops at any point along that continuum. But I'd be happy to get your opinion on that in the text chat as we go. So I'm seeing that Michael uh, is definitely one who wants to use his portfolio for reflective and sharing history of work experience. Yes, so your work experience in your resume is a valuable piece of your portfolio. Many people, you know, think about their ePortfolio as just a, a resume. It's much more than that. So right now, I wanted to take you across to my one of my favourite tools, which is Mahara. And I'm going to do a little demonstration. And I've prepared the first page of it that you should be able to link to. And I'll put that link into the text chat for you. And I'm just grabbing that now. And I'm going to do an application share. So I'm hoping that everyone will be able to see that. We don't have any iPad users in the room, no. Sometimes it doesn't work real well for them. So first of all, I'm going to give you a link to allow you to go and have a look at. And I just need to grab that properly for you. Actually, I could be demonstrating this from the beginning. That would be better. So let me just do that. Oh, thanks, Ian. Ian has also shared one of his that uh, he's 
prepared in a Mahara format at the Bright Cookie site. There's a couple of different free ones that you can get into. This is my Mahara site. I'll just shift things around. Can you just give me a smiley face if you can see that all right? Yeah, okay, good. I'm not sure if Nikki's focus is on this room or another, but <laughs> that's all right. Um, all right, this is a very busy site, but there's lots of mm, flags and pointers to what you can do in a Mahara ePortfolio. So I thought I'll start here at the beginning and make it uh, very easy for you to follow. There's really three parts to the whole process. So the first thing is you create and collect. So you can see on the left hand side you can update your profile, you can upload your files, create a resume and even publish a journal. And on the front page of the Mahara if you have a specific purpose in mind each day you might go directly to one of these depending on what you're planning to do. So once you've developed the content for your portfolio, then the second part is to organise it so that you can showcase it. And Mahara refers to the showcase element as pages. So it just becomes a, an HTML page that you can share with other people. And you know, the other day when Carol Teitelman was presenting, she said, uh, we need to have our e-portfolios safe and secure behind a walled garden and share only those portions of it with those whom we want to share it with. Excellent, Michael, I'm glad. So you'd be very welcome to come in and use this one. Mahara allows you to do that. You can be creating as much as you like behind the scenes and it's only when you select the share features that someone else can find it. So that's the third part of building your portfolio in Mahara, the share and network. And if you're doing some studies you might find that there is a group of people within it with whom you can share your portfolio, discuss some topics topics, find friends, and here's the important one, you can control the privacy. So you decide whether it's completely private, open to some, or open to everybody. So I like Mahara for that uh, reason. So I've begun to prepare some reflections for Aussie Live in my page called Aussie Live Oh no, that's my group. <laughs> that's the group that I have prepared, dear oh dear. So if you want to enter, you can become part of that group and I'll show you how. But what I need to do first of all is show you the portfolio itself and explain what each of these different portions are inside Mahara because it can get really, really busy. It's made up of lots of pages that are tabbed, as you can see here. So you've got to keep your wits about you. It's not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> I'm sure Ian and Liz would agree. Um, so in the portfolio section, you have a collection of your pages. And you can also join your pages together into collections. So here we've come across to have a look at what pages I've got happening here. As you can see, the main ones that are more or less the ones that I want to share out are here. There's one for eSkills, which was a project. This is an exemplar, an example for people to look at. And here's my one for the Aussie Live 2014. Now you'll notice on the right hand side that there's an edit button that will allow me to edit the content and layout of that particular portfolio or if I no longer require it, I can delete it. When you're ready to create a page, you'll actually click on the create page icon here. If you want to start from 
one that you've already created, you can actually copy one of these. So maybe you've got the layout and you just want to tinker around with the content. So it gives you quite a bit of flexibility in here. So let's have a look at my Aussie Live 2014. And hi, Paul. I'm just demonstrating the Mahara ePortfolio system. So here's the page that I've created already with some of my blogging or journal reflections coming in. And I did this one this morning about day two brings new connections because there were some funny things happening today that I wanted to capture uh, very quickly. I've used what we call a two column layout here. So on the left hand side you'll see some images from Aussie Live. I've brought in the little video that Shambles created on the YouTube channel. So you can do quite a bit of fancy stuff inside Mahara. And below it on the left just the, the picture of the home page. But what you're seeing on the right hand side is actually my blog or journal. And that's all coming in from the one journal with several entries. So as you can see, it starts down here. Sorry to jump around. So I've given you a little bit of information about how we got started. Something about the team. The forming, storming and norming part of our process. And then my reflections at the end of yesterday. And my thoughts as we rolled into today. So this becomes a page that I can now share with you. And you can go and have a look at it at any time. So I need to do that by coming back into my portfolio area and giving you what we call a secret URL. This sounds pretty grand. But what I want to do is share that with you. So I'm going to the share feature. I thought I was going to the share feature. There we go. <laughs> and in here, Mahara allows you to share it with either a group, which you noticed before, called the Aussie Live Professionals, or with the public, or in some cases, with nobody. <laughs> so this one has a secret URL. And I'm going to edit that now so I can grab it for you and put it in the text chat. It's a very long URL. I'm hoping they're going to do something about that later. Anyway, if you click on that now from the text chat, it will take you to a copy of that page on your own browser. And whilst you're doing that, I'm going to go into the content area now to show you how I get some of that information into the page. I just want to pause again for a drink of water and just see if there's any questions. All, right, all good. And I just want to spend maybe five minutes in here just showing you how to construct the content for that page. So here I am in the content section and I want to add some files. And the file could be an image, it could be a set of slides, it could be a document. So I want to upload a file and I have to tick that box to say yes it's my own and then it allows me to choose my files. So I made a couple of pictures of Julie's presentation today and I've stored them in here. I can open up two at a time actually. And it will upload in absolutely straight away to my files repository inside my content area. So it's just like uploading to I don't know, Dropbox or any other repository that you're familiar with. But the benefit here is that I once uploaded, that same image can be used across many different 
pages in different ePortfolios. So I'm actually creating the content now or my set of artifacts. So that word artifacts is um, commonly used to describe all of the pieces that go into your ePortfolio. So that second one is still trying to upload there. But that first one's complete. You can see that here is a little tick. So I might just, maybe it's already done. No, it's still going. Anyway, I won't waste time. I'll go to a page now. Oh, a drama for Liz, okay. <laughs> And now I want to create a new page, give it a title, bit of a description, and some tags, and I'm just using a set of Aussie Live tags that make sense to me. And it allows me to create the, the bucket, if you like, for where I'm going to display all these things. This is where it becomes really fun and interesting. Down below here you can see there's two columns into which I can place my artifacts. And the first thing that I want to grab is that picture that I've just brought in. So now I drag that image folder down here. You can see it creates a little area for itself. And then it allows me to choose the images. And here's the last two. I thought it had done it, that's fine. So I want to select that one, select that one. Oh, one at a time, okay. <laughs> and I'll leave that, I'll come back to it, so I'll just save that. So what it's done is just place that little image into the left hand area. I can do the same with the next one over here. And this time choose five. So I've now got two little pieces of evidence that I actually attended Julie Lindsay's um, keynote. And I could drag into this area some of my journal entries. So I'm going to go over to journal. And I'll only spend another minute or so in here. And I want a journal entry, so I drag that down. And it'll ask me, well, which journal do you want? And I want this one here, the Aussie Live Broadcasts. And I had created that earlier. And save it. <clears throat> and so what it's brought into place now, just scroll over a bit, are two images and a copy of the text that I sent out to everyone, reminding everyone of the keynote promotions. So now I've got a page that is actually reflecting on the conference. And I click Done. And there we have it. We have our new page already and in place called Images from Aussie Live. And I have a brief look at it. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing because I want to bring us back to have a conversation now and uh, I don't want to um, confuse with any more Mahara work. But I'll just pause before I do that and see if there's any questions. No? All good, thank you, Ian. All right, so I'll stop sharing. So that was a brief journey into Mahara. There are lots of different sources for us to find out what needs to be packed for the journey. 
It, it is a matter of practice, Peter, uh, and it does require some planning and, and thinking through of what you want to put into it. I'll bring us back to that one at the end. I wanted to find out now if you're willing to give this one, two, four, all process a go. And I can see that Michael's away at the moment, so that's okay. <laughs> yes, I will put the links in as you do the next task in. So what I'd like to do is try out this liberating structures, Nancy called it. I'd like you to pair up just for five minutes, so Ian and Nikki together and Paul and Peter together, and it requires you just private message to each other about your experiences so far with ePortfolios. What's the purpose of them and what you might put in them and who you're going to share them with. So to do that, you left click on the person's name and then right click and send a private chat. So I'll give you five minutes to do that. Or well, Amy, actually, if you could just set the timer for five minutes and I will stop talking and grab the links for everybody. And Amy, you and I could do the same in a private chat to each other. Okay, coming to the end of our one-to-one -one process. I'm not sure if you've seen my message to you, Amy. Okay, that's probably time enough. I can see that some of the conversation has stopped in your private chats there. Thank you for contributing to that. It's an interesting process that I liked from Nancy's session and thank you, Amy, for answering my question uh, from your master's program. Okay, so career portfolio, that's a really good term. I've put on the board some links that are live that you can go to visit, so I'll give you a moment to select those so that you can go and have a look. I use the UK one frequently because it's a very comprehensive site with lots of information that you can link out to. And I really like it if you could find the time to join the ePortfolios Australia group at the WordPress site there. You don't actually have to join, it's just a link that you can record. And the final one is the ePortfolio Community of Practice Learn Space which is a brilliant place in which we've shared lots of different resources for anyone who wants to create their ePortfolios, no matter what kind of tool that they want to use. And I think I actually have a slide to show you the, the front page of that. Maybe not that slide. There it is. Uh, so that's the Epcot Learn Space. And I think you'll find that that is a very useful place to go if you're looking for particular kinds of resources. We set that up in 2011 and it's still there and still uh, valid for anyone. You can actually work through a whole set of levels uh, to create your own ePortfolio from level one right through to level seven. So if you wanted a completely open, self-directed, place in which to do your learning about ePortfolios, I would recommend that one. So I'm just going to bring this to a close now and give you time to go to the others and remind you that you could join the ePortfolios Australia site and the VET ePortfolios Community of Practice and you'll find the links to those inside the one that I gave you before. 
They're great sources of communities of practice. Skip over that side. And of course, if you want to contact me, here are all my details. So I'd like to thank you for being my audience today and hope that you have some fun in creating your own e-portfolios, your professional portfolios. Thanks, Amy. Amy, I'll leave you to run through the very last slide. All right, hey everyone, thank you so much. Thanks, Carol, this was great. Um, lots of good ideas there. And, uh, some motivation pushing all of us forward, I'm sure. Um, so thanks, everyone, for attending. Uh, the recording will only process once everyone has exited the room. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask them. Um, otherwise, I will stop the recording, and then if you just want to exit the room completely by clicking the red X in the corner of your screen, and be sure to fill out the survey that will pop up uh, afterwards, and it also provides a link to getting a certificate uh, for attendance at this conference, and be sure to check out the badges that are available on the Aussie Live site. All right, thanks everyone, thanks Paul.